Hi everyone. Again, uh, welcome to this uh, lecture. We will be continuing the Linux networking on the lecture number three today. Um, today's topic is going to be the file transfer protocol. So we will be learning about uh, the file transfer protocol in depth um, and going into like how we can make the file transfer protocol, also known as FTP. Uh, then we will go into more detail regarding um, um, how we can enable a server to uh, um, do an FTP transfer. So some of those topics uh, will also be discussed. Um, so before we uh, start uh, talking about uh, the FTP itself, I want to give um, the recap from last lecture. Um, as you know, um, we finished the, the last lecture on uh, uh, the IP addressing. So let's look at uh, what we learned. So we learned uh, the basic structure of an IP address, which is a 32-bit number comprised of four octet numbers. Um, a simple example will be like 133.27.162.125. This is what is called decimal representation. You can also represent it with a binary, um, as shown here. Uh, each one will just get that uh, its own uh, binary equivalent. Uh, sometimes it's also represented in a hexadecimal fashion, um, which is like 133 in hexadecimal is uh, 85, um, and then uh, the 27 becomes uh, 1B, then uh, the 162 becomes A2, and then 125 becomes 7B. So see people simply say it as one number, 85, 1B, A2, 70. Um, some of the uh, the licenses are all cut for the hexadecimal representation. So if um, you have a license for any software, the software vendor may ask you the host name where you're hosting this uh, um, this licenses in the form of this hexadecimal representation. Um, and we also saw the use of network masks, um, which which is um, used to define which bits are used to describe the network part and which are used for the hosts. Uh, a simple notation will be like uh, 255 or 255 or 224 or zero. Uh, in this case, we know that actually um, the 224 is the first three bits of the the third uh, octet. Um, so hence the number of uh, network bits is 19 um, and the remaining is assigned to the the hosts. So um, let's look at uh, um, based on this uh, let's look at some of the activities that I want you guys to do. Um, so here one of them is to convert the following IP address into a binary format. Fairly simple, I think. Like um, with the knowledge from the above slide, you should be able to do this fairly easily. Um, and I think, like I mean, you also have the distinction between a local network and the public network, or a private network and a public network, um, based on the IP addresses. Now, the question is for the above IP address: What is the network address and what is the host address? What is the network part and the host part? Again, I think it's fairly simple. You should be able to figure out. Um, what is the um, network address and the, the host address? So um, I, I, I want you to just uh, exercise what you learn. Uh, now the third one that I want you to do is uh, the following, um, which is uh, I have given you this uh, network mask. Very simple. Uh, I want you to figure out how many um, hosts are possible in this network. Again, I think like I mean it will be like a trivial exercise for you, um, given that uh, you are now masters of uh, IP addressing based on the previous lecture. So with that, um, I'm going to uh, go into the uh, the file transfer protocol, which is the main topic of uh, today. Um, so in this lecture, we will be learning about uh, what is FTP. Why do we need FTP? Um, then how do we how do we control the FTP? 
um, essentially what are the commands that we can use in an FTP session, how to initiate an FTP session, how to end an FTP session, things like that. Um, and then we will also discuss the configuration of a Linux uh, FTP server, uh, some basic understanding of controlling uh, the permission commands in the configuration of the Linux FTP server and then uh, some administrative tools. Again I do not want to emphasize too much on the, the back end the administrative uh, aspects of it, but I still want you to understand how, what are the administrative challenges. So that uh, at least, like I mean, you are aware of uh, what is going on if something is uh, something is asked uh, for, uh, from you. So let's look at uh, what is FTP itself. Um, again, FTP, the file transfer protocol, is the way to copy um, large files. Um, I emphasize again, large files um, through the network into another system. These can be like connected in a LAN configuration, LAN configuration these are the terms uh, that we learned in lecture 1. Um, so based on that we can transfer it, it is different from remote copy which is another way to actually uh, copy a file because the remote copy actually um, um, explicitly opens a direct communication link between the two computers and then it tries to copy the file over um, for whatever duration that the copy needs to take whereas FTP uh, is all done through the network rather than relying on the, um, the uh, direct connection between two computers which is very difficult to establish. So um, let us see um, how we can actually control the FTP, uh, the first thing that we want to do is to initiate an FTP session. So uh, the, to initiate an FTP session we simply type in FTP followed by the FTP server's IP address. Um, the FTP server could be a special server on the network or it could be any other machine which is able to receive uh, the FTP request. Uh, again you see that actually the, the command and the command is of the same form that we learned. Uh, in probably like lecture one when we started when we learned the Linux basics which is the command followed by an argument here the argument is actually the FTP server um, uh, IP address you can also look for any kind of um, um, options available for the FTP um, there are new versions of FTP also uh, available things like SFTP which is more like a secured FTP uh, which encrypts the data during the transmission and then basically uh, decrypts at the tail end. Um, so that is uh, another uh, topic essentially like I mean so you, you can actually look it up uh, as a man FTP and then try to see like I mean what are the different uh, possibilities that are available. So now that you have initiated an FTP now we need to know how do we control because uh, once the FTP is initiated uh, usually the FTP server then asks you for an authentication, the authentication is in the form of uh, the username and the password, uh, some FTP also allows you some FTP servers allows you to um, do um, login as an anonymous user uh, so that it does not. So uh, think about this right I mean you are actually trying to log in into a different uh, machine just for the purpose of uh, transferring a file over. As long as the file is secure the remote machine does not need to need you to have an established account because the whole point here is you are going to send this file and basically at that point you are going to uh, cut off all your links between you, you and the remote server. And then the remote server can go on doing whatever it is, uh, whatever it wants to do. So in that sense, like I mean, you don't want to establish uh, an identity in that remote server, so that uh, you know all the time, like I mean, it checks for, uh, whether that I, that person is there. So FTP sites do allow uh, anonymous um, FTP. Uh, so essentially, like I mean, so anybody who does not have an identity established in the remote server uh, becomes uh, 
an anonymous user. So, in most cases, uh, in some of the settings, actually, you can log in as anonymous and password is nothing, and then you can log in. In some cases, they still want to log who is the user that is trying to FTP. So they will require some form of identification. Usually, the identification is your email address. So the password that they require for an anonymous access will be your email address. So you can say like FTP, the uh, FTP server name, and then it will ask you for a username. And usually, it says like uh, default is anonymous. In that case, like you can just click enter, and that takes the anonymous as the user. And then it will say like okay password. Now give the password, and it, they will uh, typically say that uh, put your email address as your password if you're logging in with anonymous. So then you just type in the email address, and then you click on it. Then immediately the prompt will change. The prompt becomes FTP greater than. So now you know that you are in the middle of the FTP session. So now let's see how once the, once we started the session, how do we proceed at that point? So there are several commands that are available. You can think of the FTP as very similar to your um, shell. So in a shell, you can, can just have the greater than symbol. Now with FTP, you will say like FTP and then greater than symbol, which gives you um, kind of a command interpreter uh, window. So let's see like what commands that we can uh, type in. Uh, again, this command interpreter will be a, a very very limited subset of uh, the Linux uh, shell, so the number of commands that you can type is also limited. So let's see um, this command that you already know, cd, which is the change directory. Only difference between what you know, uh, what you knew earlier, and this time is uh, when you type cd, it actually changes directory in the remote server. It's no longer changing the directory from uh, your site. In fact, typically, like when you log in into an FTP site, wherever you started with so the current home directory, that will still be preserved. So, say, like, I mean, you are in your home directory, like uh, slash home slash uh, XYZ, um, and then you started the FTP server, your local directory is still pointing to slash home slash XYZ. Whereas in the remote direct remote directory, it goes into some place, either just the slash, which is the root directory. From there, you can then do a CD to move to any other directory, and CD dot dot will again go back up one level, but now in the remote server and not in your um, the current uh, directory. And PWD, that the other command that you are very familiar with, the present working directory, that again it points to the present working directory of the remote server as opposed to your side. And then all these commands ls will work on the remote server, but not on your side. So even if you type ls, you cannot see any of your files in the current uh, directory, but it will display the files from the FTP site or the remote site. So then, what can we do? Like I mean, with um, so now that you know, like I mean, okay, you can uh, change the directory from the root to. Uh, the slash a in the remote server um, assume that you, you are still okay with uh, the slash home slash x y z and you want to transfer a file called pqr into the um, remote directory uh, slash a so you did cd to slash a and then you did a pwd and it prints like slash a so and then you do an ls and it lists nothing basically there are no files in that remote server now you need to copy your um, pqr into that uh, directory so the way that we do it is using the following commands uh, the transfer commands are shown here we typically start with specifying either one of these two options either binary or ascii this tells the ftp tool to assume that the file whatever that we are going to transfer is going to be a binary format um, if you type in ascii then it, it knows that it needs to transmit as an ascii format the difference here is essentially like I mean even though the data may be like very similar like ones and zeros 
the binary format uh, will um, will require like some special handling in the sense that um, um, you cannot um, you have to make sure that the checksum is the same and things like that. Whereas ASCII, there is some leniency there. So the first thing that you do is based on what kind of file CQR is, you set one of these. You either type in binary or ASCII. Let's assume that the CQR is a binary file, so we type uh, binary. As a short form, you can just type bin. Uh, bin is uh, short form for binary. Um, so now that uh, you indicated to the FTP server that the file that you want to transfer is going to be a binary. Now, how do we transfer? So, if you just say put and then followed by pqr, then this uh, pqr from the current directory, which is slash home slash xoz, will be transferred over to slash a, which is the remote server. So, fairly easy. Um, you can also do um, get. The get command will actually get a file from the remote server back to your local local PC. So here again, get is also the same thing. Get get followed by file name, and then the file name will come to um, your site. Now the next command is the change mode command. Change mode command is very similar to the command that we um, saw earlier in the previous slide. Uh, change change mode command changes the file permission on the remote server as opposed to your um, uh, your machine. Del if this is used to delete a specific file on the remote server. So again, uh, this is another command that is just uh, used to remove one of the files that you copy. And finally, the byte command will end your FTP session and it will bring you back to the original form. So now we understood uh, how the transfer works and it is fairly easy to understand uh, how actually the transfer happens. But now there is another question as to okay now we are originally in that um, slash home slash xyz that is my home directory but you know the PQR instead of in my slash home slash uh, XYZ, it's now in a different directory. It's a slash home slash uh, XYZ slash um, uh, NA. So now, how do we go to that particular directory, the local? Because we already started the uh, the FTP session. So let's look at some of those local access commands. So LCD is a is a is a a command that can change the directory in the local PC. So if you just type LCD followed by say NA, and then it will take from uh, slash home slash XYZ to slash home slash XYZ slash NA. And LCD dot dot will again go back to that one level up, which is slash home slash uh, XYZ. And LPWD will now print out your current directory. Uh, within your local PC. So we can now transfer. Now, what if we have like multiple files and we need to um, copy that um, all the files to the server? So FTP provides some shortcut commands, which is uh, mput, uh, which copies multiple files using a wildcard. So the, here the wildcard, which is specified, is the, the asterisk. Which is uh, stands for um, pretty much um, um, all the files in the local PC. So all the files in the local PC will be uh, taken and uh, dropped into the server with uh, mput star command. And mget also copies uh, multiple files from the server to the local PC. And again, the usage is fairly simple. It's mget star. So now that we understood uh, the basics um, of um, an FTP protocol, let's look at some of the challenges uh, in terms of the 
system administrator. So the first thing is uh, to configure the FTP server. So here you can actually um, configure. I mean, this these commands actually lists uh, here are how we can configure the FTP server so that we can uh, fine tune some of the access rights available for the users. So one such um, um, command is the FTP access. Which will um, set the uh, access um, from the slash etc file essentially. So uh, the this is actually in the FTP access uh, dot CTL file, which is a control file, which can actually uh, uh, use which you can use it to deny or uh, accept certain um, uh, hosts from where. Like I mean, you need to. Uh, um, you can um, receive or send the FTP request. Actually, usually make receive the FTP request. So um, essentially, like I mean, uh, this um, the the FTP access uh, lets you to allow or deny, and also like specify more uh, um, uh, specific operations like uh, read only, write only. Uh, and then the user only group only kind of uh, uh, permissions that limit the FTP access um, for uh, a particular group or a particular uh, IP address that uh, tries to FTP. Um, this also like I mean you can uh, use this command that actually to control the, the access at the uh, directory level essentially so um, you can you can actually use the FTP access to specify for a given directory or a given file what should be the um, the access rights that it uh, needs to have Then the other commands are the FTP conversion, the FTP host, um, the transfer log, which is uh, X for log, and then the uh, essentially like I mean the in Red Hat Red Hat initially um, Red Hat uh, uh, installation, uh, the users can find these files uh, in the slash etc. And then the last one, the transfer log in the slash var slash log. Um, as I mentioned, like so, basically the FTP access will be a CTL file essentially, which uh, tells uh, uh, the users which files are accessible, which directories are accessible uh, to uh, put various various uh, files into that uh, uh, that those directories. So the FTP conversions um, can be uh, used to um, change a particular file into uh, the various um, various things basically. Uh, for example, you can compress the file, you can zip the file, things like that. 
um, and then um, the you can you can also like um, use the, the the FTP host essentially like I mean use uh, the particular um, um, the the type of host um, or that uh, or which host can receive the FTP messages uh, that's the side of, that's uh, stored in the FTP host uh, file. So with uh, these files, you can actually control who is connecting to your machine, when they can connect, where they can connect, and um, also the the we saw that the FTP access using the FTP access file, you can also limit what can they access. Uh, so in that way, like I mean, FTP file is the most significant. Um, because it contains the configuration options um, and if you misconfigure those files that can also cause a denial of service and um, some of the viruses you can say think of it uh, they can actually probably like change the FTP access file so that um, it can cause a denial of service. Um, Again, the FTP protocol is kind of used. Uh, it's, it's, it's supposed to be very secure in the sense that it's uh, it's not that easy to get into the systems. Uh, so even though, like you may think that okay, this can be easily affected. Number one is FTP access is uh, first of all used in a very specific situation where you want the large file transfer. And then the second thing is it's already like uh, quite secure, so uh, you won't be able to do any kind of uh, changes to the. Uh, FTP access files. So um, FTP access file is the primary means of controlling who can access the server. Uh, this we saw already. Uh, the ability to control the user access is a critical component in fine tuning the anonymous FTP server. Again, the anonymous FTP server we talked about it in the previous section, which is um, essentially the the FTP server. Where you can log in as an anonymous person and then um, uh, control it that way, basically like do the do the transfer that way. So um, So now let's look at uh, some more details regarding the how how do we do this uh, FTP access. So again, the, we talked about the user access. Essentially, like I mean, again, the the way that we want to control the access is by defining the class, essentially, uh, the class of users. So one is the class command itself uh, uh, defines the class of users who can access the FTP server. Um, there is also the auto group command, which provides tighter control of anonymous users. Uh, it does this by automatically assigning them to certain uh, a certain group permissions. Uh, so when they log in, you can say that okay, hey, they are treat them as a, as same similar to my um, X group, so that they inherit all the the permissions that are available to the X group users. And then the limit command. Essentially enables uh, one to control the number of users according to the class and time of the day. So if they belong to a certain class, and then basically, like I mean, uh, you can also say that okay, for this time of day, I want only like ten users who can do it. Um, and this is usually like I mean, this is uh, limited through the hardware um, um, availability. So how many ports that uh, a user can open up in a machine uh, will limit the number of people who can access the machine um, 
um, uh, directly like at the same time essentially. So let us look at uh, some more commands uh, for, for controlling the user access. Now a deny command essentially like I mean this one um, specifically um, tells like which users uh, or which host to deny. Um, So um, again, uh, this is basically like you can limit them by uh, those IP addresses, and then the login fails command enables uh, one to disconnect the client after they have reached the the predetermined number of uh, failed login attempts. Um, typically, by default, this number is uh, five. Uh, there is this website uh, which has a lot of FAQs. Um, I also find it that uh, some of the IBM sites are uh, interesting and uh, it has a lot of lot more information. So again to recap uh, the the FTP access is limited through this FTP access control file which usually we keep it under slash etc slash FTP access dot um, we may be able to actually access this and try to find out what are the entries in that uh, file the entries are usually these commands that we talked about in the uh, last uh, three sections three slides uh, the commands usually are allow deny read only write only um, read write user only group only um, and then there are a few other uh, commands as well that we saw on the earlier. Um, so um, the allow I mean the typically like I mean the, the way that you will be the syntax for the uh, FTP access uh, command file is keyword followed by the value and uh, keyword it is usually like it is one, one line the keyword colon value comma value comma value so you can specify saying that allow and then you can colon Host one, host two, host three. Whereas those uh, hosts are the IP addresses of uh, the various hosts. You can also say, like, I mean, the read only, and then you can give the directory name, and so that uh, those uh, directories are kept as read only. And then you can also say, like, the user only. Um, and there are other commands, uh, herald. And uh, MOTD or MOTD, uh, these things essentially, like I mean, you can um, um, uh, specify. Uh, and then the way that you can control, like I mean, whether a particular user uh, can be given a group permission, it's essentially like I mean, uh, you can uh, use the user only command, and then again that that has like username, all the usernames, and then you can specifically say group only and then the, just the group uh, the anonymous user essentially like I mean is um, it's also like I mean you can specify the anonymous uh, in the user only uh, and then that usually like I mean the username is uh, you can get it from the flash etc slash password uh, I gave you an exercise um, I think like um, last week to actually uh, use this uh, slash etc slash password I hope you um, did that exercise and actually found out what is inside that uh, slash etc slash password which um, could give you more insights as to how to what are the usernames and then um, the group names similarly are stored in slash etc slash group so you can see that actually like all these um, different access uh, level items are stored in slash etc which is uh, under the root directory
So now let us uh, move on, um, let us look at uh, how we can control the permissions. So we have the some more commands essentially like which is uh, delete which tells the server whether the FTP clients are authorized to delete files uh, that reside on the server. So again uh, continuing that these are other commands which uh, we can code in so that uh, that explicitly tells um, whether um, the users may be able to delete some files or not and then you can also have overwrite which um, controls the FTP clients uh, whether the FTP clients can upload files and replace what is already there in the system. Then we have uh, other command also uh, for example the path filter command which essentially enforces um, restrictions on the file names that can be uploaded. So if somebody names uh, some um, um, file name as a uh, um, uh, file name with extension we can so those are the other things that uh, we can control using the path filter command. Um, so we can only allow certain files if you know that okay the virus file contains like the extension BS then let us say like I mean let us ban that file so that we can filter only the files which do not have that uh, um, that extension. The upload command determines the client's permission for placing a file in a specific directory. And let us see some more administrative command uh, one is the FTP shut uh, this eases the FTP server shutdown procedures. Um, so essentially like I mean uh, it, uh, it is useful when running the server the FTP server all the time uh, FTP who displays uh, the active FTP users in the system. So again the FTP shut, uh, shut uh, FTP shut actually provides the automated shutdown um, so that uh, quickly you can disconnect the FTP server and take it offline. It uh, actually creates a, a control file in the same slash etc uh, area uh, that is called the slash etc slash shut msg which is a shut message. Um, again this, this particular command has uh, uh, the various uh, arguments as well as uh, options so I will ask you to take a look at it when you get a chance. Now there are few more commands actually which uh, I will briefly talk about. Uh, One is the FTP DCTL. Uh, this is more like a control program for professional file transfer protocol, um, and uh, this control program is used to control the daemon uh, when it is running. So essentially, like I mean, so, so that is another another way to another one that um, you can use. Um, then. Um, FTP count is another one. Um, this actually uh, gives just the current number of uh, connections uh, for each of the the FTP sites, essentially. Um, so this shows uh, the number of connections per server, and also the virtual host and anonymous uh, configuration uh, as defined in the configuration file. 
um, so again uh, please uh, look at this website uh, to get more information regarding uh, these commands. Then the other one is the FTP top uh, which uh, displays the current status of the FTP session uh, and it also again is very similar to the top command that we learned uh, in the beginning lectures. Um, this also continuously updates until you press Q to quit the system. Then there are other commands essentially like I mean so um, uh, FT FTP quota that is to manage the quota that, uh, that's um, uh, how much uh, a user can take. Um, FTP scrub is another one which uh, removes the the scoreboard file um, for the the professional FTP uh, FTP command. <clears throat> so as I mentioned uh, the FTP program can have like multiple flavors um, uh, the SFTP uh, that I mentioned or uh, just the regular FTP. Uh, there is also like something called the um, uh, WSFTP. Uh, so here, this is essentially like a, um, the, the WSFTP is more a GUI based system uh, where it shows both the local system and the remote system, and then you can actually use the GUI to navigate um, to various levels. Um, even though, like I mean, the it says that the other FTP clients are very similar. Um, you can think of like just the FTP is the, the basic one which does not have any UI, and then uh, all these things are much more fancier, and uh, they will have uh, the U, UIs that are shown here. So I think uh, we come to the end of this lecture. So this should give you a good uh, overview of uh, FTP. Um, so we started by looking at FTP and uh, looking at how we can actually um, do a file transfer. Um, mainly, like we studied the how to initiate the transfer to FTP command. Then how do we uh, use various commands like cd, pwd to look at what are the things that are there in the remote site. Uh, then we also uh, studied how to transfer the files using the put and the get commands uh, and also we did that uh, ASCII versus binary. Um, then uh, we did um, talk about how to navigate in the local context which is uh, LCD. Uh, if you are using this one of these um, the newer GUI based uh, FTP like WSFTP you do not need to know those commands because you can easily move uh, from uh, one directory to the other using the GUI itself. Uh, then we went into like some of the administrative uh, stuff uh, mainly we looked at the four files that are used for controlling the access of FTP uh, and we learned more details uh, regarding the FTP access file itself uh, how do we write how do we code in the things so that uh, it can uh, take in like I mean it can give permissions to certain users, allow certain people, deny certain ones and then also like change the group permission for an anonymous uh, user. Um, so then um, we also like uh, learnt about various FTP commands uh, from the administrators perspective uh, how uh, they can use it. Uh, one thing that we noticed was all these uh, various files are residing in the slash etc area um, 
which is very common for Linux to easily find these files and uh, work on them. Uh, finally, we looked at this uh, the newer APK clients like uh, WSFTP, which simplifies a lot of interaction and uh, simplifies a lot of commands. So I think uh, that's pretty much it for today. Uh, we will take it up uh, from this point in the next lecture. Uh, thank you very much for listening.